Welcome back to our um, second video in our um, playlist for Unit 8 Animations in Ogre 3D. Uh, what we are going to do in this, um, in this video, we're going to start basically by um, working on um, applying and implementing multiple animations on the same entity. As I mentioned earlier in the uh, previous video, um, you can have in Ogre, uh, one of the features that it provides us for animation is to have multiple animations on a single skeletal mesh and a single entity. So what we're going to do in this um, unit, in this video, um, as a startup, is to change our dance animation, which is a full body animation, as you saw, um, to actually a two-piece animation. Uh, we're going to change the dance animation to run base, and then we're going to add another animation state as run top, which would take care of the lower body and the upper body, um, run animations for uh, for the Sinbad entity, and then we're going to run both of them um, on 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 the entity, and uh, see how it how how we can actually do this. So um, let's go to our um, constructor, and in the constructor, as you see, I already have a, a, a created an animation state, and I called it anim state. Um, so let's actually change this anim state to anim state base, and then we're going to go ahead and create another animation state pointer and we call this anim state top so then within the constructor of our entity uh, anim state is not going to be valid anymore because you've changed that name so we're going to make this anim state base and change it to run base there's a an animation on the sinbad um, skeletal mesh called run base which takes care of the lower body um, run animation for the sinbad i'm going to run this in a second and you'll see how it actually looks like um, let's go and change all of these other anim states to anim state base so we set um, our animation state base to be uh, anim state uh, to, to be get animation run um, then we're going to set that, uh, set it's enabled as true and it's looping as true, just as you saw earlier. Let's now um, run this and see how it works. Um, I have an error. Oh, you know, I forgot. Um, I forgot to change um, the animation state base. Um, anim state to animation state base or anim state base in the frame started function. So now let's compile and run. Okay, as you see now, um, this um, animation for 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 run um, only affects the uh, the lower body, um, effectively just the legs of the Sinbad. And obviously the hip and, and the root of the animation still moves, but the upper body doesn't have a um, an upper body animation, upper body movement to it. Um, let's go ahead and add those. I already created an animation state for um, anim state top um, that would control the running of the animation on the top uh, portion of the Sinbad body. So we're gonna have to go to the uh, frame listeners constructor and set it up. So we will, just like we did with the animation state base, we'll do animation state top and make it equal to entity, get animation state, and the animation here is called run top. And then um, we are going to set the, uh, enable uh, this animation state as well. So it's gonna be anim state top, set enabled to true and then oh get animation state not get all animation states so get animation state run top then anim state top set it's enabled to true and anim state top set looping to true as well. Okay, now that we have the animation states top also established, um, we can just simply go ahead and implement the animation state top, add time to it, and the time that we add is going to be similar to the 
above. So it would be time since last frame. Now, if you run this application, this should um, basically, whenever the frame, each frame starts, it should update the time of the base and run animation and the top run animation um, updated accordingly to the previous time um, of the animation and um, and then apply both of these animations on your entity and as you see here now the Sinbad is running um, and it's it's running um, the the base part the base animation basically moves the the, um, the legs and then the upper uh, um, animation, rather the run top animation, basically takes care of moving moving the torso and the hands of your um, your entity here, and uh, uh, practically combine the two animations together um, in one unit of operation. Now, I would like to point out to you that uh, we just played two animations at the same time um, before. Um, just seeing how, how this can be done, you would probably ask yourself uh, why we needed to get the animation states to be able to play an animation instead of just simply calling a function like play animation and then play the name of your animation. Obviously, uh, if we implemented our animation um, playback uh, with just one function, then the problem that we would have had is that we would not be able to apply multiple animations um, to the same scene or the same node uh, or rather the same entity because if we wanted to do two animations then we would have to run play animation on one and then run play animation on the second the problem would be it would have had to stop the previous animation before you would be able to apply the second animation and run the second animation if you just simply use a, a function to do that now animation states have this power um, for, for us in this case, that you can create as many animation states as you want and then point each of those things and assign each of those animations to whatever animation you want and then you can call all of those animations in your frame started function or your frame ended function. And that way, um, w when the frame started happens, you can update as many as a gazillion animations on your, on your um, entity and all of them will take effect at the same time. And not only that, these animations can also be weighted on top of one another. So if you wanted the upper animation to have a different weight than the, the, the base animation, you will be able to implement those um, rather um, weight, uh, weighted uh, blending um, of your animations um, on your objects. Basically, anim state has a lot of different interesting uh, uh, properties and, and methods in it that you can actually look up and see how you can combine and mix and match all these animations to achieve the appropriate uh, um, uh, or rather the proper um, effects and looks that you are interested in. Um, one quick thing that I want to point out is uh, I want to just show that you can not only um, apply these animations, you can also give them different kinds of speed as well. So let's actually multiply the upper part uh, um, of your animation to let's say half the speed, rather the bottom part to half the speed, and the upper, upper part to twice the speed um, of the original animation. And then we're going to compile and run this code. So now the base run should run slow motion and then the upper um, uh, animation should run as a fast motion, or, or rather as a, as a, as a fast forward, um, and you'll be able to see this, um, that you can, you can combine um, and even have independent speed for each of the animation that is being run. Obviously, it doesn't look as uh, nicely um, as just keeping the two speeds together because the run top and the run base uh, are meant to be played at the same rate and the same speed. Uh, but you know you could you could play with these variables and with these uh, um, values, um, however you see fit. Now let's change these backwards. So we'll have the base to run um, at twice the speed and the upper, uh, rather the top run to uh, for the for the torso and the hands to be slow motion. 
And um, again, obviously, it's not going to give you a really good um, look in, in that the, the two animations seem to be out of sync, um, obviously, because they were meant to be running um, at the same speed. But you could you could you could have an, any kind of combinations in terms of speed and weight of these animations that you want to apply on your model. All right, now that we have set up our animation run for both the base and the top uh, portion of our entity created, let's make it interactive and combine user control with animation. Now. Before we do that, let's go and take a look at how our frame listener makes the Sinbad uh, run when we press the WASD. Now, one of the things that we created up here in our frame listener was a member variable called speed, and we set that speed at 10. And then what we are doing in our frame started, we are setting a direction vector at 0, 0.0.0, .0 or 0, 0, 0. And then we'll look at, um, what the uh, key key press is, and then in terms of the state of our keyboard, which key is key is is held down. If it's W, then we set the vector, uh, which is basically the point the the direction at which we want the um, Sinbad to move at point uh, at zero comma zero comma one. For the S, we make it zero comma zero comma negative one, and then for um, a and D, we make it 1 and negative 1 on the X direction to move left and right. And remember, that has to do with the way that our um, keyboard is, uh, I mean, our, our camera is set up and the Sinbad itself. Now, what we'll do is um, I actually used um, the left shift and the um, right shift to speed up and down on the speed of my, sin my Sinbad uh, uh, mesh, um, which we won't use for this for this particular um, project at this point. And then what we did is we set the node to translate with speed times direction times the event uh, dot time since last frame. So that kind of set up our speed. One of the things I want to show you is how it looks. And already I set the animations both for um, the top and the base for the run animations to be at um, looping and true. And so I just want to get a sense of which speed would look uh, natural in terms of the Sinbad's uh, walk, or you know, we, we could think of it as, as run. So when I'm moving with the W pressed, um, you'll see that the Sinbad is moving, but that doesn't look quite natural. So let's speed this Sinbad movement, not the animation, the movement that we will do with our input controls to 50. Let's see if that looks um, um, reasonable. Okay, and as you see, the Zinbat animation is still running at the same speed. So um, I'm now holding the key W down. And yes, it does look um, look all right. So the speed does look um, look a bit better. So speed 50 is reasonable for us. Um, let's raise the speed to something like 75, see if we get a better and more natural um, look for the movement of the Sinbad. This the speed um, seventy five is not natural uh, because it now looks like the 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 ground is kind of shifting underneath. So uh, the speed of fifty, at least on my machine, looked reasonable. So I'm going to set the speed at fifty and let's run back. Yep, the speed fifty looks pretty natural for for the walk. And obviously the camera should can move it left and right and up and down and then we'll be able to use the uh, D to move backwards and W to move forward. All right, 
So next, we're going to go ahead and we are going to um, make the, the um, animation to not loop. So we'll set the looping to be false. And then we make the animation to be not also enabled. Um, what we want to do is we want to um, set the enable and disable of animation, or rather set enable um, to true and false when we press the keys. So we, when we press the keys, we set it to true. When it, we release the keys, we set it to false. So in order to do that, uh, first we will go to the uh, frame listener and we'll set the frame enable, enabled, or rather the animation base enabled to be false. And it's looping to be false for the base and the top run animation. So they'll be set to um, false, um, uh, both both the enabled and the looping. Next, what we are going to have to do is to create a Boolean variable for our frame listener, and we call this Boolean variable to walked. Then what we're going to do is when a key is pressed, we set it to be true, and um, otherwise we'll set um, the Boolean to be false. So, uh, or the Boolean va variable to be set to false. So I'm going to call it I'm going to create a boolean variable and let's call this b walked and then uh, we shall go in our frame started in the frame listener and just like when we reset the vector for our movement to be zero we're going to also set b walked to be false so when the frame listener um, frame started happens we start with um, the uh, b walked variable to be false. So we will basically set it to be false when the frame starts being rendered. Then we capture the key and we capture the mouse. Now notice when we did the um, keyboard and we listened for key down for W, A, S, and D, we set the direction. So once a key is pressed, we not only want to do the direction, but we also want to set the b walked to be true. So when key w is pressed, we set the b walked to be true. So what I did is basically I created a um, scope block for my if statement that reads is key down for the key w. And if that is true, if the w is pressed, I set the direction of my movement to be forward on the z axis, and then I set the b walked to be true. We're going to do the same exact thing for the other three directions as well. So we're going to set the B walked for the S to be true, for the A to be true, and for the D to be true as well. So then again, to go over what we did uh, previously, we had the direction to reset and we look to see if the W was pressed, S, A, or D, and then we added the appropriate direction um, to the zero out direction. What we did here is we also set the B walked variable to be true. So when a key is pressed um, at the rendering of the frame, then we set the B walked to true. Otherwise, the B walked is going to be reset every time the frame is started to be um, to be rendered. Now, upon um, the rendering to having having been set, what we are going to do is we are going to test it out as well to see if the B walked has been set or not. Right. So we we'll basically look to see if Sinbad is supposed to be walking or if Sinbad is not supposed to be walking. Now, if Sinbad is actually supposed to be walking, we are going to enable the animation states. So we go and animation states base set enabled to be true and animation or rather anim state top set enabled to be true. So if a key is pressed and therefore the b walked variable has been set true 
when we reach this be walked um, um, condition, then we are going to set the two animation states to be set to true. Now, if not, if the be walked is not pr um, true, which means that no key has been pressed, then we are going to set the animation state uh, base set enabled to be false and anim state top set enabled to be false as well. Okay, so this is very good. Um, However, we have a slight problem. We are actually adding time to our animation every time a frame is rendered. So this is not going to be appropriate anymore. These two lines of code, animation state base add time and animation state top add time, they have to move somewhere else. And here's what we are going to do to, to them. Uh, basically, we just don't, don't need them. So let's these cancel these out. And um, let's go to the condition for um, when the B walked has been set true. So a key, either W, A, S, or D has been pressed. Um, then what we're going to have to do is after we set the animations to true, then we're going to um, check and see if the animation states have been enabled. And then if they have been enabled, or rather have ended, and if they have ended, then we are going to set the time position for these animations at zero. We are going to want to kind of sort of set a looping mechanism manually. So we're going to test to see if anim if anim state base has ended. So if animation base animation state ha uh, that, that was running, if th it th did in fact end, then we are going to make the anim state base. Um, so we will, we will want to manually reset it to the start. So we set time position to be 0, 0.0 F. So what this does is if the Sinbad is walking and it its animation has been enabled, then it's going to basically um, look to see if the animation finished. If it did, it's going to reset it. Uh, if the animation didn't finish, then it's going to um, um, basically uh, keep continue working. We do the same exact thing for the top animation as well. So if anim state top has ended, and if it has ended, we're going to set anim state top set time position to 0, 0.0 f. And this resets my animation top as well. Um, now, the nice thing about doing this is that we can also go to the else section of our animation. And so we set our um, animations to be disabled, and then we also um, go ahead and set their positions to be zero. So every time the animation is is disabled, we are going to also reset it to the original position in time. And then we can actually now go ahead, since we established a looping manually, we can go ahead and disable, or rather uncomment the animation state top and then the animation state bottom uh, or base um, add time to set the animations to run. Now, if we compile and run this code, uh, we should see that uh, when we press um, a key, uh, the animations will start start running. And then if um, they're completed, then they would reset and, and come back um, from the beginning of the animation. And when we leave the key, then effectively, we're going to reset the animations. Same with the backward, with the left, and with the right. Obviously, the left and right animations are um, not, not useful. I mean, when I'm pressing the left and pressing the right, uh, right animation keys, or rather the A and the D, um, the Sinbad shouldn't be 
walking, so it would be nice if we had a strafe animation to the left and a strafe right animation that we could actually use those animations instead of our um, run base and run top um, for this example. But this should show us a, um, a simple example of how um, you can use your animation with uh, your, your control, rather your user inputs, to be able to um, create a nice looking um, interactive 3D um, system. So one of the issues that we have with this code is that we don't have, or rather with this animation system, we don't have a strafe left, left and strafe right animation. And also when we move backwards, um, it does kind of look like um, the Sinbad is not quite turning. So let's fix uh, this problem um, appropriately. So before we actually do fix the problem, let me talk a little bit about the structure and how our um, uh, objects have been uh, created and established. So if you look at my application, I have a scene node called Sinbad node that is a member variable. Then what I did, um, which kind of was a little bit lazy of me to do, is when I was creating my scene, I created a scene node pointer within the create scene function as a local variable, and I called it node underscore zero one. And then I made that as a child of the scene uh, root scene node. And then I created the scene bad node um, to be the child of the node. And I created a camera node to be the child of the scene bad node. So effectively, if you want to think about it, I have a node that is the child of the root node. Then I made the scene bad node its child and then the camera node, the child of the scene node. So the camera is kind of attached to the Sinbad node. Now, let me draw this for you real quick, and then we'll make a little modification to this uh, structure, and, um, and then we'll um, basically make this uh, work the way we want it. Okay, so let's see how, how it looks like. So this is my root scene node that I created. And so let's say that this is this is the world. And then I created a uh, node, and I called it node. And I then created another node that I parented to it. And this is my Sinbad node, which has the Sinbad attached to it. And then I created another node um, for the camera. And then I placed my camera inside of it. Um, and then I moved, I, I, I parented the camera node to the Sinbad node, which is parented to the node, which is parented to the root scene node. And so, and then I moved my camera backwards. And as a part of uh, making this camera node also to go backwards, I basically, uh, it, it is, if you want to think about it, it's kind of in the same container of the Sinbad node in, in a sense that they are parented. So what I want to do actually though, which basically means that if I move my, Sinbad left and right and up and down, then the camera will uh, will move with it. So if, so in that case, um, the camera will always be look at the back of the Sinbad all the time because the camera is attached to the Sinbad node. So a more proper way of setting this up would have been in in such a way that if this was my root scene node, I parented to it the node. And then what I would do is I parent to the node, the Sinbad node, which then will have the Sinbad attached to it. And then I also parent to the node, the camera node, which will be parented. So effectively in the blue configuration, which is my current configuration, I have the root and then parented to it is the Sinbad node. And then parented to it is the camera node. The nice thing about it is that if I move and rotate my Sinbad node, the camera will move with it. Um, I'm sorry, actually, I do have, um, so this is not the root, this is the node, and then that is parented to the root node. So a more proper way of setting this up would have been, this is to have set it up such that you have the root, then create a standalone node for it, 
and, and attach it, and then attach to it your Sinbad node and then your camera node so that you would have more control over how you would want to do this. So for example, if in this case, if I rotate the Sinbad node, it would be rotating independently of the camera node. So the camera will look um, at, at, at uh, a frontal view, left view, right view, or top view with, uh, with the, this construction. And as a part of this, I would have to make the node actually a standalone node. Let's actually talk about it now in code. So in code here, what I have is I have a Sinbad node, that basically is created as a child of the node, and the node is created, and I'm going to call it node node one, and the pointer to it is created locally. So it will be created, but when I'm going out of my create scene function, I would lose access to the node pointer. So the more appropriate way of setting this up is if I were to actually go ahead and set a scene node pointer, and then I call it node. Um, and so, um, so now I have a member variable within my class of example application called node, and it's a scene node pointer. And then I'm going to make create that as a um, as a scene node and attach it as a child to the root scene node. Then um, I'm going to make the Sinbad node to be a child of the node, and it's called Sinbad node. And then when I'm creating my camera node. I'm going to actually make that um, a child of, instead of the child of Sinbad node, I'm going to make this to be the child of node. So now the node, um, scene node, will have two, child, two children. One is the Sinbad node, and one is the third person camera node that I created. Now, originally, what I did is I had the camera node to be the child of the Sinbad node. And since the Sinbad node was scaled upwards five times, then um, moving 10 units and 20 units would have put the Sinbad at the location where I wanted it to be, which is basically a full view of the, um, the Sinbad node. Now, notice what happens if I actually do go ahead and just run this code. Now the 10 and 20 units of my camera translations will not be enough. So I'm going to probably be looking at kind of like the pelvis area from the back of the Sinbad. So um, it's even farther than I thought. So now I'm looking at kind of the feet. So now since the Sinbad, the camera node is actually parented to the node, the scale for the Sinbad that was applied to it, it's not. So I'm going to actually multiply these numbers by five, effectively scale my translation up by five. So I go five times further. And I'm going to now if I run this code, you will see that I'm now now the camera is located at the appropriate location that it was supposed to be. Okay, now my camera is located at the, the location that I wanted it to be. And however, I've lost the movement of my camera. So my camera is not moving with the Sinbad anymore. And I'll let, you, I'll let you think about it for a couple of uh, seconds. So um, pause the video right here um, if, you don't, if you don't know what happened here. And, and I'll, I'll talk about why now the camera is not moving, uh, whereas it actually was originally. So pause the, pause the video here. Think about it a couple of minutes. And um, let's restart the video if you have an answer. Great. So now let me tell you the answer why did now uh, when I moved WASD, uh, my my camera didn't move with uh, with me, and the secret there is the node that was passed to the frame listener. So the node that's passed to the frame listener, and that is where the WASD are being applied to it, is the Sinbad node instead of the original node where the Sinbad and the camera are parented. So originally, when I passed the Sinbad node. Uh, the camera was attached to it, and the camera would move with WASD. Now that I made the camera kind of a sibling, sibling of the Sinbad node, now when I move the Sinbad, the camera will not move with it. It's, it's, it's now stuck on the node. So instead of passing the Sinbad node to, to the frame listener to apply the WASD, I simply just pass the node, which is its parent. So now if I apply 
and run my code with the W, A, S, and D, the node will move, which basically with it, it'll move both the Sinbad and the third person camera because both the third person camera and the Sinbad node are its, um, are children to it. And now I've got almost all of the um, contents and, and the way that I wanted uh, my, camp, my application to be set up to um, basically uh, set up originally. Now I still do have my uh, movements uh, not quite set up properly. So what I want when I press W, I want the Sinbad node to move forward just like regularly. And then when I press D, I want the Sinbad node to look the, at the camera to kind of be looking towards me and then walk towards me. And then with the W and S, um, the, the A and D for it to left to move left and right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this through rotations. So let's go ahead and with the B walk variable in the frame listener that we originally had, let's create a float variable and call it underscore rotation. So this rotation is now going to be applied to the Sinbad node um, to kind of move it around. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we will go to our um, frame started point uh, function. And there, if you remember, we set the directions for our movement in a vector three variable, call it dir, and we set it at zero, zero, one, which is moving outside of the screen on the z-axis, and then negative one, and then zero and one appropriately. So now what I'm going to have to do for setting um, our orientations properly, we are going to go and we see for the, for, for the key w is when we want the Sinbad to move straight forward, we are going to set the rotation at zero. Basically, the rotation variable that we have here is kind of the angle of rotation. Basically, the rotation variable that we have here is kind of the angle of rotation that we want to uh, the sandbot, Sinbad node to basically uh, be rotated along the y-axis or its yaw um, rotation. So for the forward, we have zero rotation. We just go regularly, normally. Um, for um, S, when the S key is pressed, we want the Sinbad to rotate 180 degrees to look at us. Um, so we're going to set this at um, its rotation to be at 3.14 which is uh, pi radians or 180 degrees. Then for the A um, key, uh, when, when we want the, the, the rotation to, or the, the uh, Sinbad to move left, we're going to make the rotation to be negative half pi, which is 1.57. And um, for the key D, when we want it to move to the right, we're going to make the rotation to be 0, uh, 1.57 f. Um, so it'll, it'll, it'll move to the right. Now that our rotation has been set up, we will have to also rotate the objects. Now, notice that what we have here is that we have the node. The node is the container that has both the Sinbad and the camera um, as its children. I don't want to move the camera, I want to move the Sinbad node. So in order to uh, move the Sinbad um, and its rotation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the node as a child. So I'm going to ask for a child of this node, and which child? That child is my Sinbad node. So the get child method of each scene node will get as a as input a string variable. That's the name that we assigned to the child scene node when we created it. Now let's look down here and see if it is correct. See, the Sinbad node when we created was the create child scene node of node, and we gave it the name Sinbad node as a string. So we use this exact same name here as the child that we want to get. So this will give me a node. And then from here, I'm going to reset the orientation of this child node. And then it's yaw to be radian um, underscore rotation. So 
So basically what I'm doing is that I'm translating the node, resetting the Sinbad, and then rotating it along the y-axis, which is the axis that goes upwards um, from, from the plane, the floor plane, um, according to which key I press, W, A, S, or D. So if I press W, I don't rotate the Sinbad, so the Sinbad keeps going forward. If I press S, then the Sinbad would rotate 180 degrees and it would look towards the camera. And if I press A and, and D, it's going to rotate negative 90 degrees or positive 90 degrees appropriately. Given if I have set my values negative 150 and positive 150 correctly. If not, I'm just going to have to just swap the two and that would be just a simple process to do. So let's run this code and let's see how it works. And if it works, and if it does, it's going to be, um, uh, it, it is going to, to uh, create a very nice uh, view. Okay, so I see the, cam the camera. I still have access to my camera to move left and right. If I press W, the Sinbad moves forward. If I press S, the Sinbad moves backwards. If I press D, the Sinbad moves right, but it's actually pointed the wrong way. So it's th this fix is actually a fairly simple fix. All I need to do is just to go in and change the sign of my rotations to negative 150 and positive 150. So my original signs were not correct. So the problem was uh, for the key A and the key D, I had the wrong signs I'm on my rotation. So I simply just swapped the, the, the two signs. So for key A, I'm rotating pi degrees, I mean pi over to 90 degrees, and then for um, the key D, I'm rotating negative 90 degrees. And as you see now, this fixes my problem. Now, obviously, there are a lot of different ways of solving this uh, rotation issues. Um, another way I could use um, my rotation is that I could actually make the rotation of my node to be um, the rotation of rather the angle where um, the mouse is looking um, instead of the, uh, the, the keys from the keyboard. But this is the closest I can get to getting um, rather fixing the rotation problem of my, um, or rather the movement of my, uh, my Sinbad. So that the Sinbad is always moving front ways, or rather running front ways, because I only have one run animation. Now if I had a strafe animation, then I could use the straight, straight, strafe anima animation for left and right movements, and kind of blend those animations on top of each other and create a nice um, third person uh, application here, but this is this is a, um, a, an interesting setup, and I'm glad that we got to it so that you could see now what is the difference between j just attaching uh, the camera to the to the object that you're moving rather than the camera to the root of the the character that you are moving. So we got to see this application as well. So I'm going to wrap this um, video up here. It's uh, uh, getting a little bit long, but um, it should be okay. So you, we just got to apply two animations and use our user controls to also control the animation, the skeletal animation that we have to create a nice looking third person control mechanism. And um, now in the next animation, we're going to talk a little bit about effectively adding um, additional objects and additional meshes to your um, skeletal uh, animation um, like sockets. So we can actually use each bone as a socket and, and place um, um, even additional bones and additional uh, additional meshes to each bone, and and that it actually go gets applied to where where the pivot of the bone um, is located, and it's going to be very useful um, if you wanted to kind of create um, like a sword fighting system. So um, with this, I'm going to close down this video, and I'll uh, talk to you in the next uh, video in this series.